Cryptobiosis is a metabolic state of life entered by an organism in response to adverse environmental conditions such as desiccation, freezing, and oxygen deficiency. In the cryptobiotic state, all measurable metabolic processes stop, preventing reproduction, development, and repair. When environmental conditions return to being hospitable, the organism will return to its metabolic state of life as it was prior to the cryptobiosis. Forms Anhydrobiosis Anhydrobiosis is the most studied form of cryptobiosis and occurs in situations of extreme desiccation. The term anhydrobiosis derives from the Greek for «life without water» and is most commonly used for the desiccation tolerance observed in certain invertebrate animals such as boundaloid rotifers, tardigrades, brine shrimp, nematodes, and at least one insect, a species of chironomid Polypedilum van der Planke. However, other life forms, including the resurrection plant Crater or Stigma plantigenium, the majority of plant seeds, and many microorganisms such as baker's yeast, also exhibit desiccation tolerance. Studies have shown that some anhydrobiotic organisms can survive for decades, even centuries, in the dry state. Invertebrates undergoing anhydrobiosis often contract into a smaller shape and some proceed to form a sugar called trahalos. Desiccation tolerance in plants is associated with the production of another sugar, sucrose. These sugars are thought to protect the organism from desiccation damage. In some creatures, such as boundaloid rotifers, no trahalose has been found, which has led scientists to propose other mechanisms of anhydrobiosis, possibly involving intrinsically disordered proteins. In 2011, Kynorhabditis elegans, a nematode that is also one of the best studied model organisms, was shown to undergo anhydrobiosis in the dia larva stage. Further research taking advantage of genetic and biochemical tools available for this organism revealed that in addition to trahalose biosynthesis, a set of other functional pathways is involved in anhydrobiosis at the molecular level. These are mainly defense mechanisms against reactive oxygen species and xenobiotics, expression of heat shock proteins and intrinsically disordered proteins as well as biosynthesis of polyunsaturated fatty acids and polyamines. Some of them are conserved among anhydrobiotic plants and animals, suggesting that anhydrobiotic ability may depend on a set of common mechanisms. Understanding these mechanisms in detail might enable modification of non-anhydrobiotic cells, tissues, organs or even organisms so that they can be preserved in a dried state of suspended animation over long time periods. As of 2004, such an application of anhydrobiosis is being applied to vaccines. In vaccines, the process can produce a dry vaccine that reactivates once it is injected into the body. In theory, dry vaccine technology could be used on any vaccine, including live vaccines such as the one for measles. It could also potentially be adapted to allow a vaccine's slow release, eliminating the need for boosters. This proposes to eliminate the need for refrigerating vaccines, thus making dry vaccines more widely available throughout the developing world where refrigeration, electricity, and proper storage are less accessible. Based on similar principles, lyopreservation has been developed as a technique for preservation of biological samples at ambient temperatures. Lyre preservation is a biomimetic strategy based on anhydrobiosis to preserve cells at ambient temperatures. 
It has been explored as an alternative technique for cryopreservation. The technique has the advantages of being able to preserve biological samples at ambient temperatures, without the need for refrigeration or use of cryogenic temperatures. Anoxibiosis <inaudible> 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 In situations lacking oxygen aka anoxia many cryptobionts such as M tardigradum take in water and become turgid and immobile but can still survive for prolonged periods of time just as with other cryptobiological processes while survival rate studies of organisms during supposed anoxibiosis in anoxia have historically given some conflicting results, the current consensus is that certain ectothermic vertebrates and some invertebrates, for example, brine shrimp, Clegg et al. 1999, copepods, Marcus et al. 1994, nematodes, Crow and Cooper 1971, and sponge gemmules, Racevig and Miller. 1998 are capable of successfully surviving in a seemingly inactive state during anoxic conditions for periods of time ranging from months to decades. Studies of the metabolic activity of these idling organisms during anoxia have been mostly inconclusive, primarily due to the technical difficulty of measuring very small degrees of metabolic activity with enough reliability to conclusively prove a cryptobiotic state is occurring rather than just an extreme case of the metabolic rate depression MRD phenomenon exhibited by all aerobic organisms to some degree typically 1 to 10% of aerobic levels when exposed to anoxia. Thus, anoxibiosis is not considered a legitimate form of naturally occurring cryptobiosis by some comparative biologists because of these inconclusive and conflicting experimental results regarding whether a truly complete metabolic standstill actually occurs in cryptobionts during anoxic conditions, or if the metabolism is merely such a tiny fraction of the aerobic metabolic rate that it falls below the limits of detection. Also, many experts are skeptical of the biological feasibility of anoxibiosis, because any preservation of biological structures during anoxic conditions would imply that a seemingly impossible situation is occurring, wherein the organism is managing to prevent damage to its cellular structures from the environmental negative free energy despite being both surrounded by plenty of water and thermal energy and, most remarkably, it does does so without using any free energy of its own. However, as summarized by James S. Clegg of the UC Davis Bodega Marine Laboratory in a 2001 review article, while many studies have failed to find measurable quantities of metabolic activity in potential anoxibiotic organisms, and there is also some evidence that the stress induced protein P26 may act as a protein chaperone that requires no energy in cystic artemia franciscana embryos. More recent data suggest that most likely an extremely specialized and slow guanine polynucleotide pathway continues to provide metabolic free energy to the Artemia franciscana embryos during anoxic conditions. Although it is inherently difficult to prove that not a single organism in existence anywhere is capable of entering a truly anoxibiotic state, it seems to clearly be the case that most likely at least A. franciscana aka sea monkeys, a well-known and commonly studied cryptobiont is only capable of approaching, but not reaching, the above-mentioned implied violation of the usual biological conversion of environmental negative free energy into the negative entropy of cellular structures via metabolic processes. Chemobiosis <laughs> 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 Chemobiosis is the cryptobiotic response to high levels of environmental toxins. It has been observed in tardigrades. Cryobiosis 
Cryobiosis is a form of cryptobiosis that takes place in reaction to decreased temperature. Cryobiosis initiates when the water surrounding the organism's cells has been frozen, stopping molecule mobility allows the organism to endure the freezing temperatures until more hospitable conditions return. Organisms capable of enduring these conditions typically feature molecules that facilitate freezing of water in preferential locations while also prohibiting the growth of large ice crystals that could otherwise damage cells. One such organism is the lobster. Osmobiosis. <inaudible> <inaudible> Osmobiosis is the least studied of all types of cryptobiosis. Osmobiosis occurs in response to increased solute concentration in the solution the organism lives in. Little is known for certain, other than that osmobiosis appears to involve a cessation of metabolism. Examples. <laughs> <laughs> A commonly known organism that undergoes cryptobiosis is Artemia salina, also known as the brine shrimp or by its brand name, sea monkeys. This species, which can be found in the Makgadic Gadi pans in Botswana, survives over the dry season when the water of the pans evaporates, leaving a virtually desiccated lake bed. The tardigrade, or water bear, is a widely studied and notable example, partially because it can undergo all five types of cryptobiosis. While in a cryptobiotic state, the tardigrade's metabolism reduces to less than 0.01% of what is normal, and its water content can drop to 1% of normal. It can withstand extreme temperature, radiation, and pressure while in a cryptobiotic state. Some nematodes and rotifers can also undergo cryptobiosis. See also Biostasis, Cryobiology, Cryonics Cryptobiotic soil Hibernation Lyopreservation preservation